For historical lovers of wine, you might think we're in downtown Burgundy, but actually we're in downtown Napa in front of an 18th century Victorian to see a Chardonnay producer, one woman, and how it's done old school. Well, thank you for having us back. It's delighted to see all of the progress that you've made down here. And if I didn't know any better, we could literally be in Burgundy, France. Sure. So tell me a little bit about how you came up with the idea to have a winery beneath the house. This is, you know, this is my third winery. My first winery was in France, uh, Languedoc. And there I made 120,000 cases of wine. Then we moved here in mid eighties and, and created a winery up on Mount Vitor here in Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. And there we had our winery for 20 years. I was always the winemaker. I, I designed, I developed both the wine style and the vineyards. And then we sold the property. And then I said, well, what do I do now? I knew that I didn't want to do custom crush. I just need to be closer to my wines. And little by little, I got an idea, well, I can make a Burgundian winery. And, and, and what does that mean? It means that in Burgundy, the wineries are in, you know, in town, like we are here downtown Napa. They may, may be downtown Bonne, downtown Dijon. And then the vineyards are all around the, 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 the village. Perimeter and the outside. People live up in the house, and the winery is excavated under the house, underground. So you decided to emulate some of the great producers of the world in Burgundy, and most of the wineries in Burgundy are underneath homes. So mm -hmm. you excavated underneath your own home, got the permit and bonding, and now you have a winery underneath the home. Yeah, yeah. Simple. Simple. <laughs> it just took a little time and, and, and thinking before I got, you know, my brain got into this idea. Yeah. And you were sent here, I think by the government of France, to go see what was going on in Napa Valley after that little contest they had in 1976. Correct. And you came in the 80, in 1980? Uh, that was in 1980 for the, for the tasting. I mean, okay. for our tasting here. Right. And you decided, I like it here and I want to make wine here? That's correct. And now you went from 100 some odd thousand cases to 20,000 cases, and how much of the wines that you hand make today, what's the total production? It's about 500 cases a, a, a year. And it's all you? It's all me. Me, myself, and I. So the wine we're featuring on Cellar Angels is, I mean, your Chardonnay is different than a lot of the Chardonnays in the valley. Yeah. First of all, you use 100% natural yeast. Why do you do that? The commercial year fermentation takes maybe seven to 10 days. My natural yeast here in the barrels takes about 30 to 45 days. So it's very gentle, it's very elegant. It already combines the elements together uh, during the fermentation. So when a person is enjoying a glass of your Chardonnay, the 2010 specifically that we're gonna feature, what should they be looking for in the glass or what type of flavor nuances would they get? My Chardonnay start, they are kind of a combination of fresh fruit, uh, if you can, apple, pear, whatever. And then there's an element of tropical fruit. Right. And, and the more the wine ages, the more that tropical fruit comes in the front line. But, but, but still in a very subtle and beautiful way. And how from the charity side of things, this is our second opportunity to work together, why is that important to you about the giving back aspect and how it, what it means to you? This country gave me uh, a, a wonderful opportunity in my life. And I think, I think at some point, at least in my life, my, my, my vision is that, you know, giving back, giving back because I get so much more, so much joy just giving back. Right. So, I mean, uh, you do that, and I think it's it's a wonderful mixture to work with you. Terrific. Well, yeah. cheers to that. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have it. Art and science blended together. United States, France, it all comes together with Marquetta. She has produced the most expensive Chardonnay ever in the Valley, and now you get this at a fraction of that price. Do us a favor, act fast, and thank you so much for all your support.